That is not Shakira. Not that. That is That's definitely, clock. definitely not Shakira. Huh. Okay, so now there's some funny business here between the Tusk and the Hoodwick, right? I mean, unless we're seeing a support queen of pain, which I do not know what that looks like. So I don't know. Tusk four, Hoodwing five, maybe the other way around, but it's an interesting choice. No, it certainly is, and with wild cards players i think that it is more likely for them to have the tusk as the five just because boris has been playing a ton of melee fives in the tournament so far and why strip alexo of his hoodwink but true you no know, it's odd and the queen of pain is one of those forcing mid laners where you have a certain hero that you don't want to play against and you do want to play against and using that bat rider ban earlier up in the phase and this is a lane that the Primal Beast should probably look to steer away from, which, again, is Wildcard trying to control where EG are going to want to put their heroes. But I still wonder if EG care at all. I think that they do need an answer now versus the Enigma. It's something that really the rest of their lineup doesn't do so far. But it's where EG can still take it pretty much anywhere. And if they pick Picasso's hero right now, they can still move everybody everywhere. This is where I think if they pick up Medusa or Gyrocopter right now, well, you get your Enigma lane, and then, again, Primal Beast and Monkey King are still a huge question mark for EG. And let's see. Kunkka. No. They go for Kunkka instead. So, solve their mid lane problem, address the Queen of Pain imme immediately, locks in the Primal Beast and the Monkey King a little bit more, should probably still see off lane bans, but, again, you just immediately address the Quap. So, now mid lane is no longer a problem. Mm -hmm. And now... There's maybe a little bit more to try and disrupt the Enigma as well, pre-BKB, because the Kunkka... That's still, uh, he's got the axe, he's got the torn, he's got the boat. So, don't know about the cast range to pull that off in every situation, but it's at least an option, and it's something that the Enigma will have to take into account before he tries to initiate. Yeah, and we will have to see. This is a, a game where there's quite a lot of playmaking potential here for the Tusk, because Tusk versus Kunkka is also one of those kind of nice no. counters where you dodge off the torrent, you can easily just put your teammate up in that snowball to dodge off the ghost ship. It's where that's always a pretty easy save. And yeah, banning out the Whisper Timber Swap makes sense. It's where I think EG do need that offlaner now. And a ranged offlaner would probably feel the best. Don't know if they'd want to dip their toes into Visage, even though they certainly are allowed mm. to. This is where I think maybe the Whisper Puck coming into play with Primal Beast as the four could probably okay. be their answer. Just knowing what Whisper likes to play. But it's also where Wildcard have to tread extremely lightly here with what they choose for Yuma, because they pick him too weak a laner, they look for something bad. Uh, I was going to mention the Veno, but Viper is right up that alley. But again, you give him too weak a lane, it's where I feel like the 24 pick Puck, the Veno, the Nature's Prophet, all of them are going to be your S tier for Whisper. Mm -hmm. And he has a lot of options to choose from, as you just laid out, so it's going to be tough for Wildcard to really nail this down. First, though, they have to see... What's available to them? EG took away the Faceless Void. Are you looking to ban something like a Playmaker here? Or something... Uh, maybe like a Lifestealer if Wildcard are just hoping for someone who can survive? I was gonna okay. actually say Sven. Yeah. Just, again, right, right like you said. Just a casual stun. Just somebody to throw in and start the team fight. I think that's what Yuma would like to be. This is where the... Th really, the hero pick that I don't think is gonna happen but would make me the happiest would be the Mag, but... I don't think he's going to uh -oh. pick Magnus. I want him to pick Magnus, but maybe just a little bit too far out of the wheelhouse. But let's see it. Yuma special. No, okay. Yeah. They get life steal co-op. Classic, you know? 2017 newbie getting inside the Queen of Pain whenever the Queen of Pain blinks in to die. You know, give her that heal. It just works, and it is that vessel. Unfortunately, I do think that now that NP pick is pretty darn easy for whisper and probably the pick that they should look for because mm -hmm. then you just hit the life stealer and you've got too many creeps to deal with it's where i think if this was any other team then that's what they would go for right now and let's see it and okay, okay. they loop back around for the gyrocopter once they know the carry matchup which does mean that this is going to be either a whisper monkey king or primal beast probably better to be the monkey king i imagine here but uh, you know more power to him regardless but this was something they always had. And of course, now you get Gyrocopter versus the Enigma. You still flex everything all the way up until the last pick. And we'll have to see. And I think a large part of it is because playing Monkey King Carry into the Enigma 
probably wouldn't have felt as nice as what uh, you were able to do in the previous game with Pekaz, so flexing it around feels pretty alright. And Primal Beast versus Lifesteal is honestly a lane that can go either way. If the lane goes static, mm -hmm. always going to favor the Lifestealer. But if Whisper and Matthew can get some of those dynamic plays onto what is now going to be a Hoodwink in that lane, well, that's going to be the hero to feed and the hero to die. Not to mention, Lifestealer is a hero that's always strapped for skill points. So when Yuma comes into the lane and he's 1-1-3 because you have to get points in Ghoul Frenzy just to be a hero... Well, you've only got three or four seconds of rage, and you can die pretty darn easily to that combination of heroes. Mm -hmm. I am ever so slightly disappointed, though, with the switch between Alexo and Ollie, just because Alexo's been so impressive on that hoodwink. But I mean, his tusk is pretty damn impressive too, and I'm sure Ollie, uh, aka Boris, is going to be able to hold his own there. It's just not what we, uh, not what we were used to seeing, not what we saw even last game, but. That support duo, regardless of who plays what ET, they know what they're going to need to do here to enable these core heroes. So, you know, give them, uh, give them the trust. Yeah, for sure. And I think as well, having the Tusk in that hot position where you can not only dodge out a lot of the Kunkka spells, but in lane, if you ever see your Enigma getting rocketed, well, you snowball the gyrocopter, you tank the rocket with the snowball, and then... And maybe, maybe you put your Enigma in, but at least you dodge off that damage. But you also get to see uh, maybe the slight counter that we got to talk about on day one of the patch. But with the idle on range getting nerfed and with Gyro getting a little bit of a quality of life change on Flat Cannon, uh, will this counter be even more powerful? We'll have to see. But because Gyro is a classic as well, easily one of his favorite heroes. Yep. Very rarely got to see it, though, just because of the nature of the hero. But... G, bringing it back a little bit here, and I mean, we get quite a bit, right? We get the Picaz Gyro, oh, we get to see Matthew on the four Monkey King again, so should be some exciting stuff as already you see EG trying to set up here. They get themselves onto this little high ground spot. Honestly, if something comes their way, great, they can make a first blood play. If not, they already got this pretty damn valuable yeah, ward spot, so... I think they're okay even if uh, if nothing comes their way. Although they are still set up to maybe make a push for either of these bounties, which could still lead to an engagement for them, but we'll see where they actually go. Because for now, Kaz is kind of bailing out of this one. Yeah, he starts walking towards bottom. It looks like they're just going to get kind of the odd split, but both river runes, which is something we don't usually see in the monkey. Uh, okay. Chad's up, and with that, there is a lone bounty in the river, and it looks like it will just be a 2-2 split, oh, even boy. though, uh, maybe not a needed 2-2 split, but just lack of vision and knowing which ones to take, but okay, even start. Yeah, not the 2-2 not the split we normally see, right? But, eh. All's well that ends well. Meanwhile, um, Pekaz has an interesting itemization here at the start. He's got three mm -hmm. branches and his blades of attack, so he is... Just kind of rushing his way in there early, and I suppose Panda with the two full stacks of tangos could pass them over, but Akaz is really taking a, a little bit of an early risk, assuming that there isn't going to be, be much pressure applied to him. Yeah, and well, that's why he did yeah, it. Okay. There you go. <laughs> Crystal Nova, two hits, and that is why this man goes for this item build. Just too many stats, and this is where Divai... Uh, I honestly, I don't know the numbers, but up until maybe even level 3 Eidolons, that is a free play. So Divai, sure, still gets the deny, still gets the creeps pushing back into him, but this is why Gyrocopter usually gets that respect band, and honestly, that's where, I think, missing on it a little bit, we'll see if that really bites wild card. because, again, Divai's gonna get the XP, he's got the lane right near his tower, it's really difficult to, for him to gank, get ganked, but... It's just not that denying power and that same farming speed that we're used to seeing. Oh, solid opening there. Because just going to try and farm as best as he can. Here comes the Flak. Not enough to actually take him down this time because uh, Panda didn't get the Nova in. But at a certain point, the actual last hits are just kind of the icing on the cake. The, the main purpose is just get them out of the lane. And obviously that is accomplished quite nicely as... The homing missile pushes the tusk out. Alexo should be all right for now, and well, he's on a bit of an excursion here, trying to secure maybe an early water rune. That is not what I meant by secure, but 
he will take it for himself. There there was a bottle for Xantic, but he's going to get the other water rune, so he'll be just fine, but interesting play from the Tusk. Yeah, and he just splits like that, mainly knowing that the Kunkka doesn't really want to go for it. You see Smile will pick up a bottle, you know, maybe a little bit later, but instead always focusing on the double bracer is way more typical. Let's get that little durability up. Got to deal with the uh, the Shadow Strike spam, because that is going to be the call from Atlantic here. 201 split in terms of the early skill build. And yeah, I mean, why not? Sometimes we see the Queen of Pain try to cheat and max the scream just for the farming potential but even if you're not going to win the trades you still need to commit to the trades against the kunkka and speaking of commitment uh panda a little bit over committed there in the bottom lane divide hits him up with the stun and the cause was too far away to help out yeah just a little inundated with creeps uh, they ended up going for a large camp pole and even though the pole was successful and they were able to deny a lot of their own getting double waved and then having wild card hit level two just the perfect storm to take out that CM. And again, Alexo abusing this ward. This is the second courier he's been able to nab in the bottom lane. Still not ideal, and Pekaz is certainly not getting shut down, but they're getting slowly but surely what they want. And if you can't help your Enigma out, you try to help out the rest of the map. And Alexo is certainly uh, going down the list of things to do as a four position. Got the bounty runes too. He's just doing the by the by. Mm -hmm. Yeah, there's always a long list of uh, backups in terms of your plan as a position four hero. So he's trying to make whatever impact he can wherever he can, but I don't know. Eventually they'll have to address because, right? But you can't really do it right now. Yeah, just a problem. A problem that they'll deal with. Maybe maybe I'll shoot him later. You know, I think that's where once the hoodwink gets involved, then we could see that, but where top lane has been equally as quiet. Of course, not able to shut out the Primal Beast nearly as easily, but still, the pressure that Yuma can put onto Whisper, just casual pressure. He does have to be careful whenever he doesn't have the rage, but he's just having a pretty easy time. This is where top lane being an absolute draw is pretty much expected. Now the supports are going to trade a little bit of damage back and forth, and Matthew uh, was able to take down Yuma's courier there, so... You know, both of the position four heroes just trying to do a little bit more, but now they are going to make an attempt here onto Boris, and um, yeah. no point in scurry means you are not getting out of that one. Yeah, and one of the unfortunate aspects is whenever he tramples, well, he cuts the tree, so it's where I think maybe putting the uh, the tusk top would actually have an escape, but just not in the works. As mid, TP's galore, it's antic, I think he blinked, yeah, able to blink out. But just a lot of damage traded out. Both mid laners going ham with the trades. And now, uh, Chris Luck, kind of low. Might have to do a, uh, a fountain TP. But that's why X is uh, one of the best spells in the game. Matthew, that was a very well-timed TP. It's just the Boundless wasn't quite off cooldown uh, after the fight. Top, if it had been, maybe you could have stunned up at Xantic for the little bit of extra damage you would have needed. But... Yeah, at that point, it's more about making sure that Chris Luck doesn't get taken down, and yeah, he's used all his bottle charges now, so expect to see him make that XTP back. Uh, Boris? Well, he's he's here, but yeah, Xantic really doesn't have the mana to go blinking across the river to try and start a fight. Yeah, and with them knowing where the uh, good wink is, well, Boris is going to get gone on, six minute rune, they are going to fight, and Haste rune, you couldn't ask for a worse rune for wild card because now snowball. the Kunkka. Oh. Is he going to die to the DOT here? He very well might. Yeah. Huh. They do manage to bring him down. I do believe Boris is going to pay for that one, but uh, who cares? They take that trade. That's just really perfect for them. The haste rune doesn't have an impact. They still find the kill. And of all the heroes to lose, Boris is the one you could really afford to sacrifice. Ooh. Hastrun certainly made it close, though. Closer mm -hmm. than it, it really <laughs> ever or should have been. But, uh, no. I guess maybe an illusion would have made it even closer, but, uh, not gonna think about it. But they get their man, they get the kill. Kunkka now probably just wants to wait for his level 6, and then, honestly, all three heroes on wildcard probably die if he does have that ghost shift. But in the meantime, eh, not much. Kanboot rotates over as well. Just supports already being in position to fight over this mid vision, and. Already even getting set up for the 8-minute runes, just biding their time, knowing that their lane partners are going to be okay. 
It's where a little bit more space has been given over to Devai, but Devai is also, uh, well, no black hole. Kind of on the wrong side of the woods, but support's coming, or trying to come. There's a homing missile flying out, so Devai is going to get locked down, and that should set up Chris Luck to finish the kill, or maybe not the snowball. Actually going to prevent him from getting the damage out immediately, but the ghost ship still does the work. Devai taken down, Alexo falls as well. Almost a mad scramble at the end there, E.T., but EG get their kills. Boots coming out to Chris Luck. Of course, that was his level 6, so now you don't have Ghost Ship to go elsewhere, but really, you couldn't have asked for a better opportunity to immediately use that ult for kills. Mm hmm Just feels great. Still keeping the pressure on the Enigma, even though Devi has found farm and has found openings to get some of those levels, and once he hits level 6, that's where Picaz needs to be careful. Don't want to give up a kill immediately to the Enigma. It's where very little will actually take to actually kill him. Zantic, Zantic has... He blinked for the rune. Yeah. Uh... Snowball. That'll buy time. One second for blink. Can he get himself away? Yes, he can. That means that Alexo is going to be left behind. Nice pushwhack, though, in from Boris. There's going to be the Sonic Wave to follow. It's a lot of damage, but they need more. Yuma? He's crawling his way over. Will he be able to catch up to anybody? Not like that. Boundless Strike kind of shuts that down and... If you're EG, you're relatively happy you got the kill, but if you're wildcard, you're just happy that that kill was not your Queen of Pain. I mean, four, four heroes mid, but, you know, oh. the aggression drags. What? Yeah, bottom. Okay, it's close. That was the black hole, and because is now on the lamb, but if he can just TP back to his tower, TP back to well, yep. And now, if I doesn't have much of a home to stay in back towards bottom, once the gyro comes back, well, uh, just a solo play that Divide thought he could make, but... Didn't have earned charges. If he had a friend, that was 100% a kill, but thinks he can do it on his own. Very unfortunate series of circumstances there for Devi. Puts him out of the action for a good long while. And Well, I guess the question will be, yeah, who comes here to try and punish him? Panda is in. Whisper's going to charge. It's the trample. Malefist, though, is going to hold him back for a moment, but will it be enough? Maybe, because Alexo comes in. They take down Panda, the Pulverize will not be enough damage for the kill, and all of a sudden, Whisper, you're a little bit too far forward. He is going to back himself away, and Devi will not be killed. He's going to lose his Eidolons here, but you're going to be okay with that, especially if you can turn this around, because there's still four heroes here. Because didn't realize, can anyone help him? Here comes Whisper, in with the charge, into the trample. That doesn't really help his teammate, but maybe he can find some sort of return kill. He is pushing quite nicely, and with Panda back in... Well, they got onto one. It's Antic. I, I don't know about this. Yeah, there's the Pulverize. He is dropping low. Can he be finished off? Yes, he can. Frostbite from Panda gets the job done, and... It's Antic. It would have forced a deny, if nothing else, if he had just sort of backed off and let the Shadow Strike do its business. Instead, he gets a little greedy, and he ends up dying for it. Yeah, I'm real surprised that Yuma wasn't interested in all in that engagement. And Panda, well, probably dead. Got a little bit too close to the tower. A little overzealous on the CM. But it's amazing that Defy is the one that doesn't die out of everything there with how low he was to start off that engagement. But that was a real bad minute for Pekaz. The Gyrocopter spent a whole lot of time walking to the lane, walking out of the lane, not having his TP. Not the best time for the Dragocopter. It's why the Life Steward takes a little bit of a pull ahead of him, but now Pekaz is where he wants to be with as few heroes as possible, and now hopefully in a farming war versus the Life Stealer, really not too much to worry about in that lane. Mm -hmm. yeah, if it comes down to a farming war, the Gyrocopter should have the edge, working his way towards the Aghanim Scepter, so he's going to have even more to work with in terms of his ability to just find as much, as much gold as humanly possible. And while this is going down, you know, Matthew... Makes his way over towards the middle lane. Gets a little bit of experience. Hits level 6. Uh, holding the point for the time being. So, I don't know. Maybe he doesn't look for the Wukong's command immediately. But, I guess we'll have to wait and see. But, you're able to get the supports a little bit more here. And, leave them in a better position to actually help if it does come down to more team fights. Uh, speaking of fights, Whisper. He's in a little bit of trouble here. Does Alexo actually want to go all the way in, though? Well, he doesn't really have a choice. The Pulverize is going to catch him. The Wukong's Command comes out. The Boundless Strike is there as well. The Ghost Ship, though, mistimed. Well, no, it's not, because it wasn't actually targeting Alexa. It was targeting Devai. And they're going to be able to finally get this Enigma. There we go. <laughs> like the third attempt that they've made on him now. But this one does hit home. 
Yeah, just the Primal Beast keeping the pressure on the lane. It's just such a real easy setup for that Kunkka. And then eventually you're going to have to see the Kunkka just walk back mid. If he didn't have to use the boat, then he could stick around bottom and look to kill the buy on his TP. But mid tower is taking quite a bit of damage. They do need people to start arriving. DD on the Quap as well, making it a lot less close. But uh oh, Alexo gets scouted and oh, well, he's got a friend. He's going to try to get the trade and what a Sonic wave, but... Oh, now he's rooted, though. The Frostbite's going to catch him out. The Freezing Field's being channeled. Yeah. He doesn't have a blink. Matthew will just TP himself home. <laughs> Whisper was... Whisper was faking out the right clicks in case the deny was necessary, but... It's Zantic. I understand what the attempt was there, right? You get in, you Sonic Wave, you stop the charge, and it all looks good, but he just didn't know Panda was right behind him until it was too late. Yep, and then max level Frostbite. Keep on seeing CM's own teams, because, yeah... You hear that was pretty darn crazy, but it's also Quap's rule. You blink in, you will die. That's how the hero works. It's where once we have BKB, maybe we can think about other things, but Atlantic has also really slowed down net worth wise. Just hasn't really been able to get all too much out of the game. And okay, TP top, infest Alexo, get a smoke going. Looking for the gyro farming his triangle, and they will narrowly avoid Panda, but then to get scouted by the tail end, but Picasso falls into it. <laughs> He's just going to hold his ground. He's going to throw out that call down. It's not going to be enough to save him. Maybe they get a kill onto Alexo here. Yeah, they will find the kill. But over on the other side of the map, Whisper goes in with Chris Luck. So they'll take Divai Llama out. That's going to make this a pretty favorable trade at the moment. But with Yuma getting involved, Panda may end up going down here. Or not quite. He pops the Frostbite. He gets the slow. He's walking away. Whisper now. TP's in and charges forward. So they'll take out Boris. And Wildcard, have they overextended again? He's looking for the Pulverize in another five seconds, so they need to keep heroes locked in place. It's Antic, gonna get pulled back by the X into the boat, or not the boat, excuse me, into the Torrent and the Frostbite. Again, that Frostbite really just shuts it down. It's Antic is waiting, but this is also a level one blink, so it's on the longest possible cooldown, and oh, what was initially a very nice play onto Picaz turns into a nightmare for the Wildcard lineup. Well, and rewind the clock all the way to that point because because he didn't even die. He got killed by the beast. He got killed by neutral creeps. They didn't even get gold for that. Oh, wow. So really, the only thing they have going for them is that Yuma was able to walk out of everything. It's, yeah, it's the hard pill to swallow. At least the Vi has a blink dagger now, so he can look for those faster engagements. Don't know if really the Primal Beast is the target, but that's where having two strength cores in your lineup you have to settle for trying to just blow up one and then you're going to run out of gas for the other. It's where really the Kunkka and the Primal Beast play so nicely with each other. And Whisper has a full wow. Lotus Orb. So if they wanted to go diving on him anyway, well, you have to be so careful with the Snowball connection, with the Malphys, everything's just going to get Lotus off of you. Just, you know, it's something we don't usually see, but feels so nice in this game and is probably going to allow Whisper to stay bottom even longer. Meanwhile, Matthew on a very deep warding mission there hopping through the trees it's the obs down so if anybody's trying to farm up in that east side jungle they will be spotted and now well i don't know if they're going to be able to get that kill but over on the other side the cause has gotten himself into trouble again there's no neutrals this time to bail him out and that is the downside here you're trying to maximize your efficiency on the gyrocopter sending him out alone but that does mean if the enemy comes knocking he is completely alone. Yep, just caught him in the farm rotation, and now, most importantly, they can't lose to Vi again bottom, even though they are a little casually setting up here. God, I feel so bad for him. Every single time he casts idol on, he just, he just doesn't have idol on. Too many heroes are just adept at killing them this game, but he does have a blink dagger, so his moment is coming. This is where, I think, getting a team fight in mid, where everybody is directed a little bit with the terrain, probably help him out, and just blink out a bottom, so revealed to Whisper that that Blink Dagger is online, but is able to walk out of that situation, and they should pretty soon here try to involve Divai, because this Black Hole, it's not on cooldown, it's not getting any sooner. There, I find some nice picks top, though. Caught the same while she was dewarding. Take Panda down, remove the Sentry Ward. Try to establish some degree of safety and order in that lane so that they can just continue to farm it, but... At the same time, they did just lose their tower mid. Chris Luck. Now he's going to get some damage onto Atlantic, but he might want to be careful. Here comes a snowball. He does have BKB. He didn't opt to use it immediately, though. He's going to try to hold, and while he holds their attention mid, Divine ended up getting taken down in the bottom lane. They kill him and TP out. So now, 
yeah, the focus is just too split. Half the lineup's down bot, the other half's mid, so Alexo is kind of the one left in the lurch, and Kaz gets a measure of revenge for those couple of pickoffs by taking the tusk down. Yeah, and now he's exactly where he wants to be. He's farming a triangle, he's farming your triangle, and is now stealing from you. And the white stealer, walking underneath two wards, well, this is not a place for Yuma to farm and play in. And now Yuma TPing down here feels real awkward. He has to walk the long way around now to that left side jungle. There's just nothing for him to do really here unless he wants to hop inside a Divai. And he could hop inside Divai and they look for a smoke play, but they got to go now. And then as soon as they do, they have to get control of their triangle back. Otherwise, it's never going to be an area to play in. And I think that's why they're grouped up right now. Hop in and then maybe go or... I don't think waiting is really an option because they're getting more and more prepared to fight and they're de-warding you at the same time. And here comes Whisper. Trample is going to be there. The Malphisto instantly cancels his Pulverize, oh. but that Lotus, it just makes him hard to bring down. They're not going to be able to get him immediately. The Snowball does connect onto Chris Luck, but the Boundless Strike from Matthew is going to lock Alexo down. Now they get the Frostbite to buy. Well, we've already sort of a major attempt with the Black Hole, so he doesn't have a whole lot to do here as they turn it into a one-for-one -one trade for now, but a hasted Chris Luck is pushing his way forward. Can he find anything? He's still holding the ghost ship. They're not going to press their luck. That is a tier 2 tower mid. Maybe a little bit too far. And Vikaz has already kind of given them the heads up that he does not want to be involved. Well, and at least he used Black Hole. You know, could, could be worse. But like I said, more importantly, getting this vision out of bottom is where we need to see a rotation in from Boris. But he's already moving towards top. He's just looking to play the lane instead. I'm just worried about the smoke rotations that could come as it's Xantic. It's not on mid. It's the easiest connection ever. Alexo tries, but fails to make anything happen. And he's going in deep. He's on Whisper. There is no creep wave. Oh, okay. Hmm. Okay. Miss clicks pause. And yeah, Alexo is... Uh, he's going to cancel out the freezing field, I suppose. But now how does he get out of this fight? Uh, he, he doesn't. That's, that's the answer to that question. And now Yuma... There we go. They're going to force out his Rage, but now that the Rage is down, Whisper says, let me try to get in there, but there's not really a lot he can do. He's already used his Pulverize, so just an effort to push Yuma all the way off the tower. Unfortunately, if you're EG, you can't really go for that tower because your creep wave is miles behind right now. Yeah, forces them to wait maybe a little bit, but again, uh -oh. waiting while your gyrocopter is farming Goodbye. and uh, hunting. Not connecting, but Whisper, <laughs> yeah. He smells him. He's right on the money. And I don't think with that word they see him, but they get a glimpse in with seven seconds on his blink. Well, this is just four heroes on one. There's nothing you can do if you're the Enigma there. Still working on his BKB, but yeah. Just, again, more vision placed towards bottom. Just continuing to bully anyone that comes here. Just locking the Enigma completely out of this game. And the only other play for wildcard would be to really force Roshan, but... Yuma's not strong enough to 1v1 him, so instead they're just going to kind of have to sit and play around this. I finally realized what's been happening here. The uh, the little sidebar has said that Whisper has purchased his Lotus three times. I, I think he keeps disassembling it for mana boots, pops the mana boots, disassembles those, and then reassembles the Lotus repeatedly. So, maximum efficiency, I guess, but it was freaking out the item purchasing tooltip and... Now that he's got phase boots picked up, ET, I think we're done with those shenanigans, but it was kind of funny while it lasted. This is not funny if you're to buy, though. This is just a straight-up death, and you Ooh, can't afford to be in this lane anymore. Neither can Boris. Yeah, you you don't want to be there, and by the time they realize that, it's way too late. Yeah, I feel like this is EG's just slam dunk. Just every single lane has kill threat. Everybody has good potential, and that's an Orchid reveal on the Lifestealer who needs his Tusk, and Tusk... Oh, the Snowball didn't hit him. Missed. You must not dead yet, though, but there's the freezing field. His TP will just barely get off, so he is safe, ET, for varying definitions of the word, but Alexo has to sacrifice himself. Yeah, just a blink in and a blink reveal on the Tusk as well. They didn't know about it before that point, but great toggles from Yuma. You know, gotta give praise to the LS, but still getting ran at. Every single tower is defended. Every single time you try to push on the lanes, you're getting killed. That vision bottom is finally dealt with, though. They just have the Tinker Ward now, but knowing EG, I feel like somehow they're going to work that into their game plan. But in the meantime, they're working to just take away all of your outer towers here, and they can swing for Roche. 
They've got almost a full Satanic on Pekaz. He's got the crit stick, so he definitely does enough damage if somebody can tank for him. And here we are. Wild card, you have to come, but without that device BKB, I don't think they can really afford to take a fight where Black Hole's just going to get canceled again. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they're not even moving their way towards it. They're just going to have to let it go. So that's uh, Free Aegis. Presumably... Uh, I said presumably into Picasso's hands. Yeah, there we go. Makes the space for it at the last second. Shuffles the uh, the wind lace into the backpack and... Well, the gyrocopter is now kind of ready to go. He's been very selective. Uh, let's put it that way in terms of which fight he actually goes to. Just because he'd been farming up so well, not getting involved. But now with two lives, you got to assume Picasso is going to be the one kind of leading the charge here. Yeah, and it's, you know, not the fastest push, but it's just free. It's where wildcard, they're doing what they gotta do in look, mid, getting the play going, and Matthew, that would be a nice pick, but Whisper's already there to make the counter jump, and Whisper, he's got five stacks, he's got the uproar, he's got a rock to throw as well, but Yuma does just rage TP out what he's allowed to do, but at least they get the tower. Tower claimed, but it did come at the cost of their own tier two on the other uh, side of the map, so... Nothing's going to come without a cost. I suppose that is the lesson to... Oh, no! The lesson to be learned here is Divine gets his TP cancelled by the rock throw. Um, yeah. Just got to sit here and wait for death. There is absolutely no way you pop Black Hole in this instance. And Divai... Are you okay? The last 15 minutes have just been about as, as bad as possible for the Enigma player. Oh, boy. Yeah, I just virtue of all three eg cores being able to deal with you pretty much exactly as they want it just ends up feeling like a situation that he himself just never had the opportunity to do. just ended up in kind of a bad enigma game you know it's hard to say but that's what it ended up feeling like and then again a very difficult uh draft to look for those bands is whisper well he just wow. goes get you early get you fast and okay glyph doing a lot of damage and whisper might just go down but Okay. Can they turn this into more? Xantix already popped his BKB, so he's got to be careful pushing in. But that Bushwhack, okay, it'll catch out too. That's going to sort of disrupt things a little bit, but because with the Aegis, feels like pushing his way forward. They're able to take down... No! Bo oh! Oh, Divai, it's just a nightmare. Nothing can possibly go his way. And that's it. Fight's done. Yuma's just going to try to get back into the base. Maybe he makes it, but... How how unfortunate can one man be? It's just, it's starting to feel a little bit unfair. Uh, and now, they're just, they don't have Glyph. They don't have anything. Yuma's just going to have to kind of sit back and watch. If he tries to do anything with uh, without Rage, without Infest, he's probably going to die. So he will just have to watch his Tier 3 go. But, oh, blinks into a torrent. You can't ask for a, a better comedy, honestly, at this point. But... Full Daedalus on the Gyrocopter as well. He will give some respect to his opponents without Aegis, without BKB. Because he's not a madman, but yeah. Oh boy. Bye. I, I'm surprised he's still in the server at this point. I, I would have quit like five minutes ago. This is just... This is so bad for him, and now he's going to get punished again. Oh boy. He will be taken down once more. What's uh what's the record here? Two nine and five. Not a fun time, but I don't know, ET. Maybe, maybe the BKB changes something. It's just Ooh. okay. This might change something too. Whisper. Oh, oh no. no, the Lotus. Alexa's gonna try to pull him back as far as he can. They do get the pushwhack down onto him into the Sonic Wave, so they might still find the kill. But this has bought a lot of time for EG to get the rest of the lineup in, and they're going to go for it. There's the root, there's the freezing field, there's the call down on top of it. Yuma's dead, and Xantic has to blink back. And they are in full retreat. Alexo, how far away can he pull these heroes? Well, he can pull them pretty far away. The problem is Matthew has the movement to keep up with them, so... This is not really going to go the way he wants it to. He'll just try to fight for as long as he can, but here comes Panda. Has to wait a moment, as the snowball will delay this, but it... It can only delay. It can't prevent the death. Yeah, and because on the other side, you know, getting business done, as he is the, uh, the serious member of EG and, honestly, Old Thunder Awaken, but 
it just works. He's gonna be able to mop up the top racks, immediately swing for mid, still abusing uh, the Glyph. And sure, Glyph is back up, but Wildcard are almost assuredly going to try and use it for damage on that bottom tier three. They need the tower damaged. Everybody is just not farmed enough to take out these massive cores. It's where, again, strength cores, the numbers are just too high. There's a full hex as well on uh, Chris Lux, so could blow the game wide open if, let's say, Atlantic blinks in and isn't privy to that, because that is a blind purchase. They are not aware of it just yet with the Kunkka. Well, here we are. The last racks, the last tier three. Pentify gets caught out of the base, so he is not available. There's no buyback. He's dead for 40. And they're just starting to fall apart. Yuma with his BKB is holding on the front line, but he's not going to hold for long. And there's your GG. Wild card. Just get overwhelmed here in game two. And well, ET, to a certain extent, we kind of talked about this possibility, right? 24 picks, something was going to come out. EG had the hammer. And uh, wild card do certainly get flattened by it. Yeah, and just coming from the draft and combination of uh, some unfortunate picks and wild card missing on, again, one, two bans just ends up being impossible. And of course, in an impossible situation, all you can do is struggle and one that Devi was able to work past, you know, maybe for 10 minutes or so. But as soon as Whisper took over that bottom lane and got a Lotus Orb at, what, 15, 14 minutes into the game... I mean, there's just no reason for him to die. And it's Antic wasn't big enough or scary enough on this Queen of Pain to come and kill Whisper, which is probably the rotation that you would look for if things were looking a little bit more even. But everything just kind of collapsed in tow. And then you also realize that the Kunkka could also go bottom and make plays happen onto the Enigma. That bottom lane just never got solved from wildcard. And then, you know, in a 27-minute game, you really only have two, three black holes and... The black holes that Devi had to go for just weren't even connecting. They weren't even in the same stratosphere. And all the farm that Yuma has, it's great, but it's on a life stealer in a matchup that he's already losing. Just isn't even footing. Not even close for a wild card. But yeah. EG take their first series as a team. And I mean, listen, after game one, you know, we said they got the win, but it wasn't the cleanest. It wasn't the best executed. They needed that big team fight around the pit to sort of close out. This time basically no mistakes and we're all gonna fall in love with the core play and deservedly so but i do want to point out matthew and panda the efficiency here 40 combined assists and just five deaths so not only are you losing your core versus core matchups the support duo for eg was just unbelievably far ahead uh compared to wildcards heroes too yeah, and we'll have to see, because definitely keeping a close eye on what EG now do in that next phase, even though got another series ahead of us today, and maybe an interview. Yeah, that is right. We are attempting to um, get somebody in here from the EG side for an interview, so we are going to take a step away just for a little bit while we get that set up, but hopefully uh, we'll be back in just a little bit with our winner's interview with someone from the EG side. So stick around, and we'll be right back for that. Like a wrecking ball, we can break them all. Place where we can hide, you wanna 
Like a wrecking ball, we can break them all to a higher ground. We will not be found. We can win the game. We can go insane like a shooting star. Don't you want? Like a wrecking ball, we can break them all to a higher ground. We will not be found. We can win the game. We can go insane like a shooting star. Don't you want? There we go. Hello, everybody. Welcome back. We are here and we are ready to go with our winner's interview. We have Panda of, well, wow, I almost said your old team, Panda of Evil Geniuses here with us. So, uh, oh, Panda, congratulations on the win and thanks for coming to talk to us. Thank you, guys. Uh, thank you for having me here. So, uh, I guess we'll maybe keep this one short so we can get you out of here pretty quickly. But I do want to ask, you know, your team gets picked up. You're playing for Evil Genius is now one of, honestly, the, the better known, more popular organizations uh, in the esports world, not just in Dota, but across other games as well. So for you guys coming in this as a, as a South American team playing in a region that unfortunately doesn't always get as much attention from the wider dota world as they probably should do you feel that now you have uh maybe a wider reach more of an opportunity to introduce people to to the sa game who otherwise may not have paid that much attention yeah of course i think a lot of people are looking at our thing and thinking like why is eg moving to sa maybe the people from sea that don't know as much because I have talked to a lot of people when I was in Malaysia, and they were like, oh, I didn't know your team, but I'm going to look your your games now. You, you're really fun to watch. So I hope that happens more often. Hopefully that is the case. You know, we've been pounding the drum for SA Dota over here for a little while. It's it's about time that you guys get some more attention. But uh, well, sort of staying on that train, you know, Evil Geniuses, obviously you guys have not been with the organization for a crazy amount of time just yet, but... Can you speak to what that has been like? Are there any differences in your preparation, your your training, the sort of day-to-day -day business compared to uh, previous organizations you've played for? Uh, I mean, not yet, because we have been doing, like, work. We, were, we just got out of vacations because playing for TI was, like, three months pre preparation, and we wanted to chill a bit. Uh, we started streaming like three days, three four days ago for this tournament. Mm -hmm. So we're trying to warm up, catch up with Amera. Uh, we're using this tournament as practice for the DPC and Nets Major. So and we're all like, we're playing with two new people, like Trees and Whisper. So we need to, I don't know how to say, we just need to play together some games and get better. Mm -hmm. And I guess I'll have one more for you before I hand you off to ET, because you did just mention, you know, you bring in Chris, you bring in Whisper. They're obviously incredibly talented and experienced, but uh, the other three members of the team, including you, just came off of top six at TI with Thunder Awaken, and then this move happens, the lineup gets changed, you get a new org. So mentally, how do you guys sort of... Uh, stay on that same track, stay in that sort of focused position to try and build on that further? I mean, uh, we made this change, I don't know, like, how to say, 
we just keep looking for the better. We want to improve and uh, we just want to keep improving. This whole group wants to get better and do well in tournaments. Mm -hmm. But we need to prepare a lot. We need to practice and we're going to be focused for every match. All right. Sounds good. Given all the right answers. So thank you for answering mine. I will hand you off to ET. Let's see what he's got for you. No, I'm, I'm thinking, and now, I don't know if you, you want to clarify this for me, Panboo. So are you guys EG competing in SA as EG, or are you EG competing in NA with SA players, if you want to no, make that clear for me? Uh, we're going to play in SA DPC. You're going to play in SA DPC. Okay, that is, like, huge. Okay, okay. <laughs> now I know. Now I'm, okay. Cool, cool, cool. Okay, well, now all my questions are messed up. Shit. <laughs> <laughs> I'll give you well, some time. You can think. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, I guess aside from that, no, well, I mean, a camera asks all the good ones anyway. Yeah. But uh, do you think this is going to change a lot for NA now? Now that effectively, well, they're losing their top three, right? Now TSM, Nouns move up to the top. Do you think that now SA gets even more stack? You're, I mean, you're taking EG from NA, right? Do you think NA maybe gets a little bit easier now that you guys are gone? You guys have been effectively swapped one of, again, those top three positions? I don't think so, because the OG stack is going to stay, uh, even if they're not EG anymore. Mm -hmm. So the players are going to stay. I don't think much changes, unless they, I don't know, throw, I don't know, unless they start playing bad, since they're not EG anymore. But I don't think that's going to happen. NA is going to have the same competition. Maybe, like, a new powerhouses, like, for Rad Fortas, they have been playing well this tournament. I have some friends on that team, so maybe they do well in DPC, take some matches. Yeah, they can become the new nouns. Who knows? A five rat fan. A five rat mm. fan. I see. Yeah, they, I like they the just need, They just need a sixty thousand dollar contract, and you know, maybe they're at, they come to the top. Oh you know? <laughs> uh, well, crap. I, honestly, that's all I wanted. You've been great, Panda. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, guys. Mm -hmm. We will uh, we'll let you go, but again, thanks uh, thanks for coming and talking to us, and good luck moving on. Maybe we'll be talking to you guys again. Okay, thank you guys. Bye. Mm -hmm. Have a good one. You too. And uh, whoops, there go the cams again. Yeah, that's that's how it's gonna be. But so we are back. But yeah, get to talk to Panda. Get to sort of pick his brain a little bit about just how this is going to work i suppose which saying it like that et it makes it sound like it's it's some big hurdle for for the eg players they're just going to go about their business they're just going to keep playing dota the way that they've been playing dota it's just the environment around them maybe takes on a little bit more here with such a big name org uh picking them up but didn't seem to affect them in this series they get themselves a clean 2-0 sweep and we shall see what they do moving forward they are set to play the winner uh, of our next matchup, Nouns versus Infinity. So we're going to be switching gears just a little bit here. No, oh, yeah, definitely. And we always hear from Panda. That's the one thing you can appreciate about him, you know. Some of the other players, you know, they're they're shy. We'll, we'll get them eventually, you know. you They go down the list, or this will be interview number, you know, 53 for, for Panda Boo, as he is just the, the dad of the team, I feel like, in a lot of situations, you know. He's just the ultra vet at this point. Mm-hmm. Is that veteran presence? He is, well, I would say, you know, something of a leader for this squad, and he led them to the 2 0 sweep. So we are going to be moving on. Nouns versus Infinity coming your way in just a little bit here. So we will be hopping into that series just as quickly as we can, and we'll be back on the other side of this break. <laughs> 